and good evening everyone and welcome to this episode of the your health is important facebook live broadcast i am dr mj carter your host producer on our personality and we are so glad that you have decided to join us this evening because our purpose our passion our goal is to provide you with the ultimate health care knowledge experience so thank you for joining us we appreciate you and welcome to the your health is important why because your health is important i am dr mj call you once again we are live on facebook and we're here to answer your health care questions we're going to start off bringing you up to date about the monkey pox monkey pox this started off as almost uh a humorous topic uh the last time we talked about it a few weeks ago but now this has become a big problem the biden administration has declared the monkey pox a health care emergency the uh, city of San Francisco has announced a state of emergency over the outbreak, and New York has declared it an imminent threat. The World Health Organization has uh, deemed it a global health emergency of international concern. So it is a global health concern. It is affecting the majority of places that we know, the majority of places that we like to go. So the question has become, and I've been getting emails, questions, texts, faxes about how does this affect my travel plans, Dr. Collier? I plan on doing some traveling before the end of the summer, uh, before it starts to get cold. I'm going here, there between now and uh, Labor Day or even the Labor Day weekend. I have uh, friends and family that are coming and I want to be able to uh, spend quality time with. So the question then becomes, how is my travel affected by the COVID, uh, by the monkeypox rather? Does it cause any problem? I don't have to be concerned about it. I want to make sure my phone is in uh, mute mode. Hold on. Okay, finally, we got it. Okay, so the Biden administration has declared this an emergency, and what are we going to do? How does this affect travel? Doctors from the Center for Disease Control and Prevention caution travelers to refrain from high-risk activities involving intimate contact. So according to the WHO, anyone diagnosed with monkeypox or who has signs and symptoms of monkeypox should avoid traveling. Of course, that's a common sense thing. So if you see someone in your travel experience that has a rash that looks a little strange or a rash on their face, hands, etc., then they probably have monkeypox at this point and need to be avoided. Now, so over almost 7,000 cases have been diagnosed in the United States at this point, and we think that that is a, a significant undercount because people aren't reporting it. People aren't reporting that they have monkeypox. They're just going through it. The problem is it takes three to four weeks to get through it totally from the time you uh, develop the rash to the time the, the lesions dry up and are no longer feel of the virus. Then this person is non-infectious. That process can take 21, 28 days, sometimes even longer. So that's a long period of time to be, uh, you know, hiding out or, you know, uh, not being able to get out, etc. So most people, they'll cover the lesions up and still try to continue their usual and customary activity. So this is a big problem right there. So how is this going to impact your daily travels? That is the question. How are you going to get from point A to point B to get where you're trying to go? So for most travelers, this shouldn't cause you any long, but it's worth understanding that there's risk in numbers and depend upon where you're going. If you're traveling to an area where there's a high incidence, such as New York or San Francisco, then you need to probably be a little more cautious than you would going to uh, Mississippi or, you know, uh, Alabama uh, in that situation, because it's not going to be as many cases. So uh, the issue is diagnosing and then uh, avoiding exposure. So do you need to wear a mask? No. Although this can be transmitted from a respiratory. In other words, you have to be a person's breath can give you the, the virus, the monkeypox, but you have to be in such close intimate contact. They'd have to be breathing in your face, like during the intimate act of kissing or making love, etc. So uh, it's more uh, obvious and more easily passed from person to person by intimate skin to skin contact. So let's say you're leaving Atlanta, you're traveling, you're going somewhere and your public transportation has cloth seats. Well, cloth is a very, very good vector for transferring the monkey box virus. So if you are, have to sit on cloth seats, that is a big problem because you, even if you're carrying uh, uh, swabs or, or Clorox wipes or something of that nature, you can't clean a cloth surface good enough to remove the virus. So you're much more successful. A leather seat will respond to cleaning with a, a cleaning cloth, uh, but ideally uh, uh, that would be the mode of transportation. But 
let's say so you're you're on the bus they have cloth seats this is the problem uh you're on a, most planes now have leather seats so it shouldn't be an issue but you should clean the surfaces the uh the seat belts the uh the screen for your monitors your uh your tray tables all those things need to be wiped down because they can be vectors of this virus and many other diseases as well now once you ride to where you're going you ride to the hotel you're tired you're exhausted uh your most your highest risk is from the towels that you're going to use from the bathroom and from the bed linens that you're going to be on now remember they supposedly uh, change the linens every day but uh, a lot of times hotels will only change on demand and if uh, let's say somebody has two beds in a room and you can't tell which bed they slept in or they, they they slept in one but made it up and so the sheets didn't look too dirty so they didn't change them so it's not uh, uh, doing too much to ask them to put fresh sheets on your bed and bring fresh towels upon arrival particularly if there's any question that these towels have been used or might be soiled if that is a question or issue then make sure that you do that that you get fresh towels and that you get the bed linens clean but remember the biggest issue is the comfort on the bed that is never cleaned or is cleaned very rarely and that is one of your biggest issues of infection because people get get there they throw their suitcases on top of that they throw their bodies fully closed on top of that sometimes unclothed on top of that uh depending upon where they go and how exciting the trip is so you have to be very very careful and conscientious about doing that and exposing yourself uh to potential uh, monkeypox virus transmission so that's what we are with the monkeypox now once again thank you so much for tuning in we greatly appreciate you you know we want you to sign in we want you to say where you're watching and listening from because we want to know we want north south east and west so kathy london good evening coming from carnival horizon cruise i'm on vacation but still want to continue to be updated kathy you on a carnival horizon cruise so cruise ship boy packed and uh you know a bigger vector for COVID at this point uh than uh possibly monkey pox so make sure you protect yourself when you're in a closed environment when you're outside on the deck uh, it's probably not as big a risk as when you're inside uh, so make sure that if you're in, in certain venues that you still uh, wear your mask and try to socially distance as best you can in doing so. Thank you, Kathy. We appreciate you for being here. Sarah Davis, good evening from St. Louis, Missouri. Some of my best friends are in St. Louis. I really like St. Louis. The Midwest is amazing. Thank you, Sarah, for tuning in. Sean Big Time Green. Sean Big Time, thank you so much. You are really one of my top listeners, and we appreciate you tuning in because it is very important for men one to have good health information and two to share it so sean when you're amongst your peer group and y'all sitting around playing spades and cards and dominoes or any other social activity just sitting around watching games etc have a conversation about health uh share with them some of the information that you have heard here and be the medical ready reference amongst your peer group people will appreciate that from you and they'll like it and they'll be glad that you did okay next Sherry Gamble, good evening from Dallas. So we got Dallas, we got St. Louis. We are good to go. Let's go, Sherry. Makiba, thank you so much. Makiba is local. She's here in the Atlanta area, and she is a she is a regular to this broadcast. Thank you, Makiba. Estelle Oliver, good evening. Estelle, you didn't say where you're coming from, but good evening. Thank you for tuning in as well. Peggy Bennett, good evening. Thank you so much uh, for being here. Uh, uh, Carmelita from Cali. All right, we got California in the house. Now we got West Coast. Uh, Janae Allen calling from West Palm Beach. Now we got East Coast. We got West Coast. Now uh, we've got the United States of America covered. And I want each and every one of you, I want to challenge you again. Be your medical ready reference to your friends and family. Winnie King, thank you so much from Terrell, Texas. Now we got the center of the United States. We got Florida. We got Texas. We got California. Okay, everybody. Uh, Darlene Rogers Heath. All right. Hello, Darlene. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. Darlene, it is a pleasure to see you. I'm going to get back to your direct message. I promise you. I'm going to try to do it later today, but I will definitely do it tomorrow. Orlando is in the room. Thank you so much. Now, Estelle is from Lithia Springs. Okay, Estelle, thank you so much. I knew that, but I wanted you to share that with everyone else. If you didn't want people to know, I wasn't going to just put it out there. So thank you so much. Let's do one more. Okay, Victoria Dean. Oh, there you go. Be traveling with her own bedding. Thank you so much, Vicky. We want to make sure that you are listening because you'll need to either travel with it or just ask the hotel staff or, you know, upon arrival, uh, just say, I'd like to get fresh linens, please. So they give them time to do it. You come in, you have them, you know, you check in, you unpack your clothes, tell them to change the linens. You go out to dinner. By the time you get back, it should have been taken care of. So we should have no issues with traveling. Thank you so much, Vicky. All right. Okay. 
Okay, for Nitra Bryant, tuning in from the Canada, and she swears by the Lipo products, been taking them about three years. So the Lipo product line, again, started off by number one product is the Lipo Drops Maximum Strength. This is a formulation that's utilized for weight loss. You put a drop of food under your tongue about 15 to 20 minutes before eating your meals, and it allows you to metabolize food in a different way. So food is metabolized and not stored as fat, and you lose weight. That is great. But we've also expanded our product line to offer you things that will keep you healthy. Dr. Collier's Big 3, Omega-3 Fish Oil, Probiotics, and Vitamin D at the dose of 5,000 international units per day. That is the therapeutic dose that will get your vitamin D level up between 60 and 90. At that level, you have protection from infectious diseases such as viruses like influenza A and B, the coronavirus, Delta and Omicron variants, uh, fungal infections like toenail fungus, fingernail fungus, vaginal yeast, jock itch for men, bacterial infections like strep throat, pneumonias, all of those things. The environment of your body is too unfriendly for pathogens to grow when your vitamin D level is, is 60 or higher. So very important that we get that up. Thank you for nature. We appreciate you. And if anybody else wants to check out the Lipo Drops line, go to lipodrops.com, lipodrops.com. You see it scrolling at the bottom of your screen. You can go get good healthcare information about how to lose weight, how to stay healthy. We have products such as our Lipo Immune that have three different products in that, that will boost your immune system and help protect you from all of these infectious diseases that we're fighting right now. Let's get to it. Now, our, our producer this evening is Vinny, Vinny from Georgia State University, and he's going to be helping us uh, with our questions. Okay. Do I take my drops in the morning? Yes, you can. What's the significance of placing the drops under your tongue? Well, Valerie, that is a great question, and we want to talk about that. It's called sublingual administration. And when you place something under your tongue, it is absorbed in such a rapid manner. It's just as if you have taken an injection of that particular medication. So it gets high doses of whatever it is into your system very, very quickly. You've seen the most common things when people put nitroglycerin tablets under their tongue. They're having chest pain. They take a nitro tab. They stick it under their tongue. And within 30 seconds, they're pain free. Uh, that's how quickly it is absorbed and, and it gets into your bloodstream. It's a very vascular area. But more importantly, when you take something sublingually, it, you avoid what's called the first pass effect. The first pass effect is the first time something passes through your GI tract and system. So let's say you're you're uh, taking a pill or you eat something. The acid in your stomach will uh, totally uh, destroy a significant and substantive portion of whatever that is. It can be food. It can be an antibiotic. It can be a vitamin tablet, whatever. And so if you take a thousand milligrams of something, by the time you actually absorb it, it may be a hundred milligrams. You might have lost 900 milligrams or whatever it is uh, just from your stomach doing what your stomach does, which is digest things. Well, without that first pass effect, if you take a thousand milligrams of vitamin B12 under your tongue, you're getting 1000 milligrams of vitamin B12 under your tongue. So, Vitamin B12 and B6 are two of the components that are in the Lipo Drops Max, uh, again, because they help. Uh, everybody knows what B12 does. It gives you energy. But what you may not know is that B12 also gives your body permission to lose weight. It cuts on your weight loss mechanism. B12 does not make you lose a pound, but it does make your body susceptible to weight loss because weight loss is an abnormal condition. Your body does not like to lose weight. Your body does not want to lose weight. Your body fights you the entire time. So it's very important that you do that, that you uh, try to uh, uh, take things sublingually. That way uh, you have a better, better uh, opportunity for uh, absorbing whatever it is. And again, this is equivalent to taking an injection. The Lipo Drop product was developed because people would come to my weight loss center and they would uh, receive weight loss shots. This shot was is a medication called Lipovite. It's the exact same formulation as in Lipo Drops, but the problem is you'd have to come back to get the shots. And so, of course, early on, people were losing a lot of weight. They come in, they enthusiastically showing up once a week, but eventually life takes hold. So you got to have the travel time to get to my office. You got to get the shot. You got to drive back. So even if I'm, I get you in and out in 10 minutes, it's still two hours of real time by the time you count all that's necessary. So we found out that you could give, I could give people a one month supply uh, of the lipo drops in the bottle and they would be able to accomplish that without having to keep coming back to the office. So that works out wonderfully. The lipo drops max formulation works wonderfully. And thank you, Valerie, for your support. Okay, great question. 
What is the best multivitamin to take for women? Okay, that is a great question. Let me start off by saying this. Vitamins are a fixed chemical formula. There's no better way to make a vitamin. Uh, the, the vitamin formulation should be exactly the same. What you want to do is say you asked about multiple vitamins. The key phrase in that is missing. The key phrase is a complete multiple vitamin with iron and minerals. That way you should have, I'm trying to adjust my camera so my face isn't uh, lost there. Okay, so a complete multiple vitamin with iron and minerals. That will uh, give you everything that you need uh, on a daily basis. A couple of name brands, one a day for women, Centrum, Zbeck. All of those are, are great, complete multiple vitamins with iron and minerals. But uh, you don't if you're spending more than 10 bucks for 100 vitamins, you're you're paying for a, a pretty bottle or a celebrity endorsement. But again, there's no better way to make a vitamin. You just make sure that you get a formulation that says a complete multiple vitamin. You'll have a name brand and then you'll have the store brand that says compare to uh, the the. Centrum z -Bec, vitamin D, one a day for women, etc. Uh, so make sure that you get one that labeled a complete multiple vitamin. The key thing about vitamins is you actually have to take them. I bet 90% of the people that are on us with us tonight have a bottle of vitamins in their home. They have some in the kitchen, they have neither in the bathroom or whatever. Some of them are unopened and have been unopened for months. So the key about a vitamin therapy is you literally have to take it. And when you take a vitamin or any other pill from an aspirin to a, a prescription medication, always take a full glass of water when you take it, not just a sip to get it down. What most of us do, our pill taking technique, we'll take a glass, we'll take a sip, we pop the pill, we take another sip, then we take one more sip, then we throw the rest of the water back in the sink. Well, what happens then now you have wet the tablet, it's gotten down, but it's sitting in your stomach and it turns into gum. That gum is usually highly acidic and irritating to the lining of the stomach. So it starts, your stomach tries to digest it. So your stomach starts dumping extra acid into your stomach. That extra acid without anything to really digest other than the tablet starts to, it accumulates. And now you're starting to get a queasy feeling and nausea, sometimes even diarrhea. However, if you take a full glass of water, that will melt that tablet, get it out of your stomach, into your system, and it'll be out of your stomach in two minutes or less. And so there are very few pills these days that have to be taken with food. The key thing is taking enough water when you take it. So a uh, full glass of water when you take a vitamin or anything else, that's your take home for today. And that will change, uh, again, how you respond to medications. And if you're taking more than, say, three or four tablets, you need to take another glass of water. Uh, and a lot of times, even if you're just taking supplements, you're taking Dr. Collier's Big Three, the Omega-3 fish oil, the vitamin D, and the probiotics. You'll need to take at least one full glass of water with that, uh, sometimes two. I will take them, I'll spread them apart a little bit. I'll take uh, one pill, full glass of water, then another pill, chase it down with maybe a half a glass, and then a third one, a half a glass. I'll, I'll start taking them when I wake up in the morning. I'll rinse my mouth out, take one pill. Brush my teeth, take one pill. Shave my face, take one pill. That spreads it apart. It also allows the pills to melt. And once again, get out of your stomach and into your system. Very good way to do it and uh, results in no side effects, no nausea, no queasies. You don't even know that you have the medicine in your stomach. Most medicines are coated, so they should not bother your stomach, provided you allow it to melt appropriately. And that's what a full glass of water is required. Next question. Okay, this is an ATL question. Are you accepting new patients in office right now? Noel Bridges, yes, I am, all day, every day. People ask that question all the time. Vinny, you can take the question down. Okay, so after I answer, just take the question down so that way people can see me. Okay, very good. Now, I'm taking new patients all day, every day. People say, I hear you on the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. I see you doing Facebook Live. Are you actually seeing patients? I am a working physician. I see people all day, every day. Just finished my last patient about 15 minutes ago for today. And uh, so happy to take new patients call to the office tell them that you participated in the facebook live and we'll get you in here as quickly as possible you don't have to be from the atlanta area you can be i have people that come from orlando i have people that come from uh, miami i have people that come from california 
It just depends on what your needs are and if I can help you. One of the other things that we are doing now is telemedicine business. So almost anywhere uh, in the country that you're from, you can call in and book a telemedicine appointment and we'd be happy to see you that way. And then if it's necessary for me to have you come in, we will do so. Sometimes it is. Sometimes I need to touch you. I need to physically examine you. Sometimes I need to draw blood specimens for certain things. Uh, other times you can give me a history. I can give you a diagnosis diagnosis or you may already know what the diagnosis is and we can just expand on it check and see if you're getting optimal therapy uh see if there are alternatives available etc so we can give you a substantive medical visit via telemedicine uh sometimes i can even have you go to a local draw station in your city get your blood and then i can get the results maybe the next day or two days later and then we that's an even more substantive office visit or you could have gotten blood drawn and just you can uh email me or, or fax me your results and we can review them prior to your telemedicine office visit so those are things that we can do this new technology is amazing but but it has allowed me to uh, be available for more patients across the country and has allowed you to uh, to interact with me and allow me to serve as your primary care physician if you so desire. Okay, next question. Thank you, Lenny. Can I take a life of while taking high blood pressure meds and meds for asthma? Estelle, great question. Uh, Yes, you can, because the lipo drops are, are a combination of vitamins and amino acids. There's no medication that the lipo drops are not consistent with and compatible with. Uh, there is no contraindications to any disease state. You can be perfectly healthy and take the lipo drops. You can have diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, uh, a long list of, of uh, disease states. Uh, and you can still take the lipo drops or virtually all of the supplements that we have. Uh, there may be one or two that we would have questions about, but the vast majority of them can be taken safely no matter what your diagnosis, no matter what your disease state, if you want to lose weight and if you want to stay healthy. So supplements are, in Dr. Kaya's vernacular, something that you take along with, not instead of. I am not trying to replace any prescription medication that you are taking, but oftentimes we can add a supplement that will either enhance that function or work better or along with, say, lowering your cholesterol. If you have high cholesterol, you're taking hopefully a statin that will be uh, Lipitor, a Torvastatin, uh, Simvastatin, a Simzocor, <clears throat> um, Levolo. There are several. and but. If I add omega-3 fish oil to it, you're going to get a much lower cholesterol and a much lower triglyceride level. And that's going to help you overall with your lipid panel. So you can take those two things to supplement each other and get a better outcome than taking either of them by themselves. So great question. <clears throat> Tam Scorpio's finest, Wes. Thank you, Tam. I appreciate it. It's good to see you again, and we love hearing from you. Can you heal from GERD naturally without pharmaceutical drugs? Uh, there are some natural products you can take that will stabilize the acid in your stomach, but gastroesophageal reflux disease is usually caused by weakening of the lower esophageal sphincter. That's what holds the acid in your stomach. Your stomach, there's your mouth, your esophagus, and your stomach. As the your esophagus has no protection in it from stomach acid. Once you are past that valve, the low esophageal sphincter, inside the stomach, the stomach is coated with mucus that protects the stomach from digesting itself. Well, as long as the acid in your stomach stays below that juncture, it's called the GE juncture, then you should not have any problems. But gastroesophageal reflux disease, by definition, means that acidic fluid is coming up. It may just be irritating the lower part of your esophagus. It can actually come all the way up to the back of your throat and you can feel it depending upon how loose that sphincter is and, and, you know, how much pressure you have on your stomach. Your stomach, when it's digesting food, it's got muscles in three different directions. So those muscles are constantly squeezing like this. And they can squeeze us like squeezing a balloon. You squeeze it, then the fluid has to go somewhere. And so in this situation, that fluid is, is acid and, and di partially digested food, uh, just like when you, when you vomit. So uh, when that happens, that highly acidic substance can irritate the lower portion of your esophagus causing esophagitis. It can even perforate. It can literally digest a hole through it. It can come all the way up and get into your mouth and one, give you very foul breath because your breath smells almost like vomitus, but also it can digest your teeth and start to deteriorate and break down the enamel in your teeth. And so you end up with dental caries 
or rotten teeth. Uh, so uh, all of these are things that can happen due to gastroesophageal reflux disease. So the primary therapy, of course, you can't necessarily stop the acid from coming up, but you can neutralize the acid. Uh, most of the therapies uh, that exist, H2 blockers, which are histamine blockers like Pepsid, Zantac, which are now available over the counter to uh, 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 proton pump inhibitors. Those medications are like uh, uh, Omiprazole, Prevacid, Prilosec, all those names. Those stop your stomach from making so much acid. So even though your stomach is still refluxing, it's not, it's a lower acidic content. So it's not doing those things and causing you, you, you to feel bad that way. It's not trying to digest the lower part of your esophagus. So uh, those things to do it. There are natural uh, substances that can do the same sorts of things, uh, uh, but things that you think might would do it. They used to recommend that people drink milk and or cream. Worst thing you can do, it, it causes a rebound effect where your stomach is dumping out twice or more amounts of acid. So you don't do that. But they used to have a, a thing called a sippy diet where you would drink, uh, you know, six, eight ounces of milk before and after meals. And then again, at bedtime, uh, that, of course, caused lactose intolerance in a lot of people. But uh, found out that was literally one of the worst things we could do to the treatment of acid reflux. So there are now uh, multiple over-the-counter drugs that do work. Again, the Pepsid is over-the-counter uh, at one half the prescription strength dose. The, uh, the, uh, uh, Tagamet is over the counter. The uh, Zantac is over the counter now. Those are things you can try. But I would recommend that you go to a place like GNC or the vitamin shop and ask them for things that can help. Uh, peppermint is a good natural uh, way to uh, decrease stomach acid. That's why a lot of people get peppermint after a fine dining experience. That's why they have a bowl of peppermint. It's not to freshen your breath. It's to help you digest your food better. And ginger. Uh, like ginger ale, uh, but there are also uh, ginger capsules and ginger teas and those sorts of things that also will help uh, stabilize uh, your metabolism, your digestion processes, and help with acid reflux. So great question. Great question. Okay, next. How much vitamin D should you take daily if you're over 60 years of age? Uh, Sheila Alexander, that's a great question because it doesn't matter whether you're 6 or 60. Uh, the dose that you should take is 5,000 international units per day. Well, actually not 6. Uh, this says a an adult, uh, say 16 or older, 5,000 international units per day will optimize. And then uh, in younger ages than that, it's more important how much you weigh, not necessarily how many years you have on the calendar. So six-year-olds today are not the same size as six-year-olds 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Uh, these kids are bigger. They have more mass, and so they can tolerate a higher dose. But uh, I would say that uh, almost, you know, in conjunction with uh, what your pediatrician would recommend, you can give to children. Uh, adolescents can probably take a standard dose. But the recommended dose for an adult, the, the, the optimal dose, uh, the, the FDA is still recommending 800 milligram, uh, 800 international units, which is a total and complete waste of time. You can't even sustain a normal vitamin D uh, if you had a normal vitamin D. But nine out of 10 people that I test have very low vitamin Ds. The normal range on a vitamin D is from 30 to 90, from 30 to 90. Most people I test are under 10. Some people are undetectable. And that means you have poor bone health, poor dental health because your teeth aren't as strong as they can be. Your bones are more susceptible to fracture if you slip and or fall. So this is a problem. But uh, a dose of 5,000 international units per day uh, boosts your immune system, gives you strong bones, strong teeth, decreases your chance of fractures. But um, And also, once your vitamin D level is 60 or greater, it's cancer preventive. The first thing that happens when a person gets a cancer diagnosis is they place a person on vitamin D. Now, at that dose, 5,000 international units per day. But what's best is that let's, let's not wait until we get the cancer. Let's prevent it from happening. So start now. Take that as a part of your daily regimen. That's one of the things that Dr. Kaya recommends in his trio life for Dr. Kaya's lifestyle trio. And that is you take uh, vitamin D at 5,000 international units per day, omega-3 fish oil at 2,000 to 4,000 uh, milligrams per day, and probiotics. And the probiotics have to be the, the unit of measure is colony forming units, call it CFUs. Those CFUs should be in the billions with a B, not the millions with an M, but the billions with a B. And you need to have more than one colony of bacteria. Three would be the minimum that I recommend. My product has seven 
different types of bacteria all in the coliform units of the billions of units and that is why the lipobiotic is just a great product to, to add to your regimen go to lipodrops.com right now get more information about the entire lipo line and find out that, how to optimize your health okay next question benny billy sue Cohn, hello what was the name to lipodrops that are not the max i want to start out slow uh, you can start off uh, with just a regular lipo drops formulation, and then we have a, a lipo drops uh, that contains African mango. So there are three different formulations: the original lipo drops. But you don't have to start off slow. Uh, what was happening was we had the original lipo drops formulation. People were taking it. People were losing weight. People said, "Well, if a little works good, then I'm going to double the dose and see what happens." And so the original recommendation was one drop of full on your tongue one time per day with your largest meal or just before your largest meal of the day. What we found out was that uh, people were taking more. And so Dr. Kaya did not recommend that, but people were doing it. They were losing more weight faster. So did a study to evaluate the, the effect of having the dose, we ultimately, which ultimately results in the lipo drops maximum formulation. And that happened with the maximum formulation, you lose more weight quicker. There's really uh, no downside. You don't have to titrate the effect of the lipo drops. You don't have to start off with a lower dose. But if you like, the original lipo drops formulation is still available. The lipo drops max is available and the lipo drops African mango. African mango is a, a natural appetite suppressant that don't, not only tastes good in the lipo drops formulation, but it's one that just we added to it. People loved it. Uh, because it was natural. It was from the motherland, so to speak. And uh, and for people that like natural things, it was a good thing that we can add to the amino acids and multiple vitamins that are in the lipo drop preparation. But when we increase the lipo drop max formulation, it just basically uh, allows you to achieve your objective quicker uh, and uh, in more dramatic weight loss. The great thing about altering your metabolism is you lose weight from places you cannot traditionally lose weight from, like under your chin the back of your arms across your waist lose the muffin top with lipo drops was our tagline lose the muffin top with lipo drops in your bra line if you're having to squeeze your bra or your bra makes you bulge out above and below the bra you can lose that back fat uh and again this is not you cannot target weight loss so exercising going to the gym doing a thousand crunches or sit-ups or whatever um uh, doing whatever you do pull-ups pull-downs to try to uh lose back fat it's just you it can't happen but you can metabolize when you do something that metabolizes fat you will metabolize fat from places that you have fat and so this allows you to lose fat again from the places that you traditionally cannot lose it from and so that's one of the great reasons that people really really like to lose that muffin top with lipo drops okay next question Benny. Can certain foods trigger asthma? Yes, they can. Tamika, great question. And I recommend highly if you suffer from allergies and al asthma is just a really bad and severe allergy response. Uh, so if you suffer from allergies, if you suffer from asthma, if you have skin rashes like eczema, eczema, I hear people saying eczema uh, on commercials now. It is pronounced eczema. It is not eczema. Uh, but if you have any of those allergy conditions, it may not be that you're being exposed to topical things. It may not be a contact dermatitis. It may be something that you're eating. And so when a person uh, has diabetes, when a person is overweight, when a person complains of abdominal uh, you know, discomfort, they say, I feel like I'm bloated or something like that. I will do food allergy testing on you and you can literally do a food allergy test with one drop of blood. You take that one drop of blood, place it on a card. It's amazing technology. They can analyze that one drop, test it against multiple different allergens, multiple different foods from milk to peanuts to cod to uh, tomatoes. Uh, to shrimp, to chicken, to beef. Uh, a lot of people think when they're eating tuna and salmon that they're eating healthy. And then you find out that you're allergic to those things. You may be allergic to strawberries. You may think you're allergic to milk or that you're lactose intolerant. And then you do a test and you're not allergic at all. So it's a very simple and elegant way to help improve your GI functioning. A lot of people have what, what's called a leaky gut syndrome. And you can treat that by taking probiotics, but you may want to know what it is that you're allergic to. Let's say you have multiple food allergies. And let's say one of your food allergies, you're allergic to uh, milk. So you get a salad 
You get a salad with a milk-based dressing like ranch, the universal salad dressing that everybody loves. You get ranch, or you eating ranch dressing on your wings? Well, so now you're allergic to that. Then your 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 appetite, you get shrimp. You're allergic to that. Then you get beef or chicken or pork. One of them, you're allergic to that. Then you decide, okay, I'm going to have a nice dessert. I'm going to get strawberry shortcake. And you're allergic to that. So everything that you have eaten is going to cause a negative response in your gut. But since you're piling on, you've eaten four or five things that really create problems. And so you're going to have a bad experience. You're going to be, oh, that food didn't agree with me. Or I feel like I must have eaten too much. Or I ate too fast. Or my food is not digesting. Or I need to take a walk because I need to walk it off, so to speak. Or you end up with a, a worst case scenario, you know, nausea, vomiting, explosive diarrhea. All of those things can happen. And it's not that the food is spoiled or bad. It is just that you are allergic to it and didn't know it. And so that's a very simple thing that, that most doctors can perform in the office now. It's not a complicated test. You have to sometimes ask for it because the doctor may not even be aware that the technology exists. But when they do routine blood work on you at a doctor's office, you tell them, test me for food allergies in the sink. You might want to be tested for indoor environmental allergies as well. You can find out. If you're allergic to dogs, if you're allergic to cats, if you're allergic to uh, uh, very common mice, cockroaches, okay, and then uh, dust mites inside, outside, virtually every tree, grass, and pollen that's in your environment, you can be tested for and find out if you really have these allergies or if that's a problem or if you do, you know to avoid those things and what you need to do to protect yourself. Sometimes it may be you can't avoid it. It's just so many things. You just need to take an antihistamine every day. Possibly if you go outside, wear a mask and cover your eyes. Your eyes are a great way to get exposure. Pollen and dust and things get on your eyes. And every time you blink, it creates a tear. The tears go down your tear ducts and directly deposit that allergen into your sinuses. It's a perfect system to make you have an allergy response. So you can get some glasses, preferably some wraparound, let's say Oakley style sports glasses or even goggles that will protect you and then uh, a mask so that you're not breathing in those things. Uh, but you may find out it's none of those things. You, you have no issues with pollens and grasses, but your, your issue is the foods that you're eating while you're outside enjoying uh, those situations. So that's a great question. Thank you very much. Next question, Manny. Okay, Marlene Labrito Kennedy. My GI doc suggests I stop taking ascorbic acid because it increases heartburn. First time I've heard of this. Well, it can in some people. And if it's increasing it in you, uh, then that answers the question. Uh, so ascorbic acid is vitamin uh, B, I think. Uh, or is it C? I can't remember. Uh, but ascorbic acid is one of the vitamins. And uh, so I think it's vitamin C, actually. And then you take that and then uh, it can cause any. Remember what I told you is oftentimes not the vitamin. It's the technique that you use for taking it. If you take a full glass of water, melt that vitamin, get it out of your stomach and into your system, it's not going to irritate your stomach. It's not going to cause increased acid production. And so that is the thing. A lot of people would complain about uh, vitamins irritating their stomach or making them nauseate or, or virtually anything else. That's why they, they don't take the vitamins because they've taken them once or twice and they didn't feel good afterwards. So they just avoid them from that point forward. So if you change your vitamin taking technique, if for whatever reason you're taking anything that causes you to get GI upset, first first plan, drink enough water when you take it. Second plan, take it mid-meal. Even if it says take on an empty stomach. If you can't tolerate it on an empty stomach, you can't take it on an empty stomach. So this is a, a compromise you'll have to make. So you start eating, you get food in your stomach, you take the pill, you take a full glass of water, you finish eating. 99.999% of the time, that will relieve you of GI upset associated with taking your medications. So full glass of water and taking whatever it is mid-meal. You can also coat your stomach with like a, a cup of yogurt. So you take some, uh, eat some yogurt before taking the medication. That will help as well. Or anything else like uh, applesauce or something that, so you have something on your stomach, as they say, but that won't inhibit the absorption of the primary product, which is the pill that you're taking. So then Things, just little pearls that you can do that will help enhance uh, your lifestyle when you have to take medications. Next question, Benny. What's good for swollen varicose veins in the legs? One, not getting them, Carolyn. That is a great question. Uh, but once you have var varicose veins or dilated veins, and once they've been stretched out, it's like a balloon. If you take a balloon that's tiny and you blow it up, even once you let the air out of it, it never goes back to the size that it was prior to you, you blowing it up. So your veins are just that way. Veins are very unique in the human body. If you look at your arm, if you're vascular, and you can see the veins, along the veins, there are little bumps and lumps. Those are valves that are inside the vein 
the purpose of which is to only allow blood to flow in one direction, which is back toward your heart. So with every pump, the arteries swell and go, they swell and go, they, they stretch and squeeze, and so they keep blood moving forward. Once the blood has gotten down to the capillary level, it transfers over to the veins, and then it has to return back to the heart. And so your veins in your body have valves in them that keeps that blood moving in one direction. When, you, when your veins stretch and become incontent, incompetent, incompetent, then blood flow can be reversed. So the blood is flowing backwards. And so you got blood coming in and blood flowing backwards. So that stretches the vein's diameter and makes it so that it, it gets that look. So instead of it being nice and straight, now it looks squiggly and uh, and it's just dilated. Uh, so once they're there, uh, you have to either have them stripped, which is the old school way of doing it. They now have new techniques where they can insert, uh, they can inject them with what's called a hypertonic saline solution that irritates the, the lining of the vein and then they wrap it tight so it sticks together and it closes the vein off without having to cut it out. Uh, they can do the same thing with lasers now. Uh, you know, So there are multiple technologies that can do that. There are places that specialize in that. Uh, one of the names is Vein Clinics of America. Uh, you can contact them or just Google online, uh, you know, treating varicose veins, and you can see what you're doing. But the best thing is to prevent them. If you find that you're sitting in a chair all day, if you're working at a computer like most of us are now, uh, you got to get up and move. You should not sit more than two hours. You should not sit more than two hours when you're on Netflix and binging and you're watching uh, Bridgington or you're watching uh, Dunton Abbey or whatever. Uh, you got to get up and move because every time you move, you can't just stand. You have to walk. When you walk, you plant uh, the heel and then you roll up to the ball of your foot. That action strips the, the veins of their fluid and sends the blood back towards your heart. Every step does that. And so that stops the veins from becoming dilated and helps. You can also wear compression socks. Uh, men's compression socks will fit any woman. Uh, they are great. They are inexpensive. They will last forever. And, uh, you know, whereas you buy uh, women support stockings, they cost twice as much and they don't last but a, a couple of wearings before they are stripped. So, but men's socks, you can get a nice colorful uh, ones that will uh, complement any outfit that you're wearing and, uh, and help decrease the space and potential for veins to swell and give you varicosities. Uh, but if you see that the women in your family have them, your mother, your grandmother, then you need to start being prevented now to either delay the onset or prevent the onset of varicosity, the varicose veins in your lower extremities uh, to make sure that's not a problem. Okay, great question. Lee Daniels, Dr. Kaya, I have very high B12 in my blood system based on my last blood test. What can I do to get my B12 back to normal? Uh, stop taking B12 uh, would be good. Uh, it's very uh, unusual. One, a high level of B12 is not necessarily a bad thing. There's no danger. You're not going to become toxic from it uh, unless you're supplementing uh, to excess. Uh, if it's just coming from what you're eating, then you're fine. If you're supplementing, just stop supplementing and the numbers will go down very, very short order. Your body does not store vitamins. It only uses what it needs and the rest comes out in waste, that waste being urine and feces. So uh, it's very difficult to become toxic on any vitamin. Even when you hear people taking quote mega doses, uh, they just can't stay in the body. Your body metabolizes them very quickly and gets rid of them. So that's why it's important to take a vitamin supplement to keep the levels up because the levels will go down very quickly. Uh, almost impossible to accomplish a very high level or a toxic level just from the foods that you're eating because there's not enough nutrients in the foods that we eat. So if you're taking supplements, just stop taking them. And in a very short period of time, those levels will come down. But I don't want you to think that that you're in danger in any kind of way. This is not a problem. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, a noted. It's just a, an out of bound uh, variable. It's just an out of bound uh, amount of the vitamins in your body and you stop taking it, it'll just go down to what's called a normal level and you want to stay in the normal ranges okay miss deborah williams williams does methotrexate for arthritis suppress your immune system yes it does methotrexate is uh, uh that's how it works basically it's, it controls or uh, limits your body's immune response arthritis is, can be can be uh, an autoimmune problem. There are, you know, methotrexate is a, an old school way of doing it. It's uh, it works very effectively in a lot of people, but it is uh, uh, it does lower your immune response, so it makes you more susceptible to uh, everything from tuberculosis to uh, the flu 
viruses, uh, bacterial infections, etc. So you have to be uh, conscientious that you are immune compromised if you're taking the mexotrexate. There are now uh, better products that can do that. Uh, the problem is that they're expensive and, and your insurance may or may not cover them. But uh, uh, there's one uh, called Embryo that they have injectables, but they also now have oral tablets that will do the same thing. They even have infusions that you get infusion as little as once a year that can help uh, give you the benefits that you need uh, without necessarily compromising your immune system as much uh, or possibly as toxic as the methotrexate can be uh, at certain levels. But it is a viable therapy. It's readily available. You can get it anywhere, and um, and the vast majority of insurances will cover it without any difficulty, and it does give you benefit. So, but you, but the answer to your question is yes, it does compromise your immune system function. So methotrexate, good for what ails you if you have an autoimmune problem, lupus, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, uh, several other things that are getting autoimmune. Methotrexate, they'll throw methotrexate at, and if it helps, it helps. If it doesn't, then just stop it. But uh, uh, methotrexate is a non-steroid treatment. The other things are steroids, which also compromise your immune system function. So there you are. It's kind of six in one hand, half a dozen other. Next question, Benny. If, is lipodrops okay if you are on a field and high blood pressure medicines? Uh, Shardy, Papalas, yes. And this is why there are no stimulants in the lipodrops. Uh, weight loss medications that contain stimulants, particularly if you have atrial fibrillation, uh, which is basically where your heart is overstimulated instead of your heart should be synchronized and beating and, and like a drum uh, with a great rhythm. The top of your heart squeezes, the bottom part is filled in, the bottom part squeezes. So it should do this. It should do this in sequence. It should do. When you have atrial fibrillation, the top part is doing this. It's, it's, it's fibrillating. So it's not one, it's not pumping as efficiently. Two, the bottom part of the heart is not full. So that when it pumps, it's not sending the appropriate amount of blood out to the rest of your body. The other thing is that when blood isn't moving, it does what blood does. It clots. And if you get clots inside the ventricles, which is the lower part of the body, when it pumps, it can send those clots out to your brain or to your distal body and cause blood clots in your extremities, uh, cause blood clots, what's called pulmonary embolism, or cause and result in strokes. So uh, very important that you take a blood thinner. Uh, when you when you have that diagnosis of atrial fibrillation, at minimum, you should be taking a low dose aspirin every day. Uh, but oftentimes, now it's a combination of a low dose aspirin and a a blood thinner medication uh, like clopidogrel or, or apifixin or something like that that can do that. But uh, yeah, but the lipo drops is compatible with those things. There's no contraindication. There's nothing in the lipo drops that will stimulate your heart that could cause your atrial fibrillation to get worse. It does not impact the medications that you're taking. And again, no first pass effect. You squeeze it under your tongues. What it should do, however, is result in weight loss and you lose the weight. All of those things are going to get better. Uh, uh, you'll be less susceptible to atrial fibrillation stimulation. Your blood pressure will be easier and better to control. There are just so many benefits to losing even 5% of your body weight, which let's say if you weigh 300 pounds, it's only 15 pounds. That's not a lot. But the benefits are incredible with a minimum amount of weight loss. You readjust things. Your body gets back as close to normal as possible. And so you don't have to be at your ideal body weight. Just again, as little as 5% of your body weight results in dramatic improvement in your overall health. Great question. Okay. Do you recommend ESI to help with pain for degenerative disc disease? Uh, electrical stimulation is, is what I think you're asking about. Uh, that can help tremendously. I had a patient who had been in excruciating 8 to 10 out of 10 level pain for years. She came into my office. She was smiling. She was laughing. She was joking. She didn't have that sad face. She didn't have that distressed face that she usually had. I said, what's going on? She said, well, I had a electrostimulator stimulator implanted. I said, well, how much did it improve your pain? I said, you normally eight to 10. Now, where are you now? Three, four, five, six. She said, zero. I said, zero. I said, that just right now? She said, no. She said, since they've had it in there, uh, I've been in zero pain. She said, I've not been pain free. And as long as I can remember, but for a minimum of, say, 15 years, this was life changing for her. So it is something to consider uh, if you have uh, pain that is not responding to traditional pain modalities. If you've been on uh, pain medications for long term and you're ready to try to wean off of them, uh, this is new technology that uh, can give you great response. Uh, they usually try to, uh, you know, do a test. They will implant some leads temporarily. Make sure they're, quote, in the right place, if you will, that can dial down the pain. 
And if they hit the right spots, boy, it's amazing how it can be life changing to you. So something to consider. It is a process. It's not like you walk in, get fitted and walk out. Uh, they have to do basically a nerve mapping uh, to make sure they're going along the, the pain pathways. and They're blocking them efficiently and effectively. But again, great benefit from that. Great question. Okay, Deborah Platt, good evening from Hillsborough, North Kakalaki. Anything supplement for lymphedema? Uh, no supplements for lymphedema, unfortunately. Lymphedema is very, very difficult to treat and control. That's basically where your lymph system is obstructed in some way and not draining because as your blood leaves your heart, it's in the arteries, it goes down the periphery. And remember, I was saying that at the capillary level, it has to transfer over to the veins where there's a lot of fluid that's associated with the transmission of that blood from your heart to your distal uh, extremities. That fluid comes out of the arteries and it goes into what's called the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system ultimately returns it back to your heart where it's remixed with the blood cells again and gives you the mixture that you're most commonly familiar with. Well, sometimes with lymphedema, that system gets clogged, plugged, for whatever reason, that fluid does not make it back to the heart and it starts to accumulate. Everybody has seen somebody with lymphedema. It used to be very common in women who had breast cancer surgery. Uh, they would cut out the lymph nodes and they would get lymphedema of the arm on the affected side. They rarely do that now. So uh, this is not the problem that it used to be as little as 10 to 15 years ago. Uh, but you also have seen people with large legs, sometimes one leg, sometimes both legs uh, in doing so. Uh, the thing is they can do some things that can decompress push that fluid out, make you then give you uh, diuretics to make you urinate it out, so to speak, over time. But you literally have to stay on top of this. It, it doesn't fix the problem. It just it just de it just like turning on the, the faucet in your bathroom. You're just letting the water out, so to speak. But you have to constantly let it out. And so it, I have patients that have to go through regimens where their legs are wrapped, uh, you know, for uh, some period of time that squeezes the legs so the fluid has no space to accumulate that forces the fluid back toward the heart the heart pumps it to the kidneys the kidneys allow you to get it out by urination uh, and then they just basically wait until it builds up again and then they go through the rapid uh, other people stay on compression uh, continuously so that the fluid doesn't build up and they don't have this issue but uh, there are no major breakthroughs in the treatment of lymphedema you say why don't you just take a water pill it's a little more complicated than that because the, the fluid is third spacing when you take a water pill, it makes you urinate out the fluid that's in your arteries and veins. When this fluid is third space, it can't get to your kidneys, so you can't just use a water pill to do it. So I've seen people take high doses of diuretics trying to do that, and uh, they're basically just they're drowning inside. The arteries and veins are you know very low on fluid, so they have low blood pressure. They look like raisins, and they still have the uh, the swelling in the extremities. So this is a problem. So uh, lymphedema, there are places that specialize in the treatment of lymphedema, physical therapy centers that can help uh, tremendously, but unfortunately, no natural substances. You do want to control your salt intake uh, so that you're not retaining fluids. That's one of the things that you can do. And then there are some things that would naturally diurese you that are supplemental. But uh, again, I wouldn't say that those are treatment for lymphedema. But they just would gently, gently massage the fluid out of you in doing so. Okay, great question. I suffer from David Brown. Thank you so much. I suffer from stomach bloating and bad gas often. Which of your supplements will help? David, great question. The supplement that will help you, uh, there are two. There's uh, the probiotics, which stabilizes the, the bacteria in the gut. Your stomach has a mixture of good bacteria and bad bacteria. If your stool or your, your breath is, is smelling foul, uh, then it's rarely your teeth in your mouth. It's usually from your gut. Uh, if when you pass gas, it's unusually foul, that means you got an excess of the bad bacteria. That's your uh, aerobic bacteria, uh, or anaerobic bacteria, rather. Uh, so those are the ones that really smell bad. And so you take a probiotic that puts good bacteria in your stomach. Two things cannot occupy the same space at the same time. So if you have an increased amount of the good bacteria, the bad bacteria can't survive. So it starts to decrease in its concentration and it gets you back to a better mixture of the bacteria in your GI tract. And uh, you will notice that once you've been taking the probiotics for a week or two, that your breath smells better, Your uh, your when you pass gas, it's not as foul when you have a bowel movement. You don't have to close the bathroom off for an hour 
uh, because it's just, you know, it, it doesn't smell good, but it doesn't smell bad. And so one of those things, the other would be uh, our lipo cleanse product. This helps you uh, expel those sorts of things in the bad bacteria. It is not a laxative. The lipo cleanse product is not a laxative. Uh, what it does is allow you to have large, easy to pass bowel movements uh, that are probably twice the size you're having now. And with that comes a lot of the bad stuff that's being stored in your colon uh, that you don't want to carry around. So it makes your stomach, when you lose that, so you decompress your colon, you empty it out. So you have a flatter stomach. You don't have the gas. You don't have the bloating. You don't have all those things. So that combination of two things, we call it the belly fix. The belly fix, the probiotics and the lipo cleanse uh, will greatly improve your GI health. And these are products you can take every day forever. You don't have to not take them. Uh, they will just sustain a good, normal GI flora in doing so. Okay, great question. Barbara Jones, what medications can you take at home if you have COVID? I have a friend who does, who does, I guess, does not want to go to the doctor. Well, Barbara, uh, there are some things because if you're not having bad symptoms, you can take uh, over-the-counter medications. I like to place my patients on a non-sedating antihistamine such as, in this order, Allegra, Zizol, Zyrtec, and Claritin. These are one pill, one time per day dosages that are all used to be prescriptions that are now all over-the-counter at the same prescription dose. Now, if you get a prescription, oftentimes your insurance will cover the cost, but uh, if you buy them over the counter, you don't have to uh, incur the cost of going to the doctor. So if you don't want to do that. So non-sedating antihistamine, Allegra, Zizol, Zyrtec, Claritin, a, a mucolytic decongestant because the problem is you get congested, uh, particularly in the chest, and that is where the COVID becomes a problem. COVID causes inflammation in the lungs, which you can recuperate from. But with that inflammation comes increased fluid. That fluid in your lungs can become infected with bacteria that are already in your chest. And now you go from having a, a COVID bronchitis to a bacterial pneumonia, which is what the problem is and what people die from when they catch COVID. Uh, so you want to take a mucolytic that makes that mucus thin and watery, breaks it up, moves it out of your chest and helps control the cough. A uh, product that I recommend would be Mucinex DM, Mucinex DM, not the D. It has a decongestant. The decongestant will dry up that, that mucus, but if it dries it up in your chest, it makes it thick and it can become like glue and difficult to expectorate. But uh, the Mucinex product, the parent product, makes the mucus thin and watery, and you can cough it up, hack it up. And so if you do that, do not swallow it because it'll get in your stomach and, one, cause infection in your stomach. Uh, two, it can cause nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. So spit it out uh, discreetly in a tissue. Don't just spit it on the ground. That's not nice. Uh, it's not socially acceptable. But keep some tissue in, uh, you know, or once you're in the bathroom, uh, you can spit it uh, and expectorate it. So uh, mucolytic, uh, and then the non-sedating antihistamine. Uh, you can get uh, cough syrups. There are several uh, that are over-the-counter now. There's one called Delsum, D-E-L-S-Y-M, that lasts 12 hours. People love it. Uh, it's got a mucolytic in it as well. And those are products that if you're having fever, body aches, Tylenol, Advil, Aleve, all of those are good products. If your symptomatology is worse, if you have a moderate to severe case, then you're going to need the prescription medications that actually uh, most pharmacists can prescribe now. The Paxlovid, uh, which is what the president, what president Biden told me, it's a five day course. It's like uh, the Z pack. If you're familiar with that antibiotic, this is not an antibiotic. It is an antiviral. It specifically targets the COVID bacteria, the COVID virus, the COVID virus. And you can get that. And there are pharmacies where the, where the pharmacist can give this to you without a doctor's prescription. So one of the few drugs that that can happen with. So you, you can get a uh, treatment without having to go to the doctor, but if your symptoms decrease and most people will get over it, uh, uh, you know, because they have mild to moderate symptoms, particularly if you've been vaccinated, if you've had at least two shots, then your course will be much less uh, severe. If you had two shots, if you have a previous history of having COVID, then you are a super soldier. If you've had uh, two shots plus one or two boosters, then you're as immune as you can be. But to stop this from happening, uh, again, you can still supplement with the vitamin D that will shorten the course. Vitamin D at a dose of 5,000 international units per day. Uh, you can also take, uh, again, the things that I mentioned, the non-sedating antihistamines, the mucolytics, the mucinex DM, maximum strength. Uh, 
not the one you have to take every four hours. Uh, take the one you take every 12 hours, and then that will give you a uh, great symptomatic relief. But if you have not improved in 48 hours, something's not right. You need to be seen uh, and don't wait until you're in the emergency room. Okay, final question. Vinny, let's do it. Sandra Polk Lamar, can you take lipo drops if you're scheduled for a colonoscopy? Uh, yes, you can, but if you're scheduled for a colonoscopy, it's just one day of basically keening yourself out. You go get the colonoscopy, which is probably going to make you lose five pounds, and then you can start back with the lipo drop. You can miss one day if you like, but the answer to your question is uh, you can put the lipo drops under your tongue, but you're supposed to do it before meals. So uh, you literally could do this up until the last meal you eat before you start the clean out prior to the colonoscopy. So there's no downside to doing that, but on the day of the procedure, you don't need to do it because you're not going to be eating anything after the procedure. As soon as you eat your first meal, you can go back to the lipo drops if you like. So uh, uh, no downside. Nothing bad is going to happen if you do. But you're also, again, what it does is help you metabolize food. If you're not eating, there's nothing to help you metabolize. So there's no uh, reason to take it uh, while you are uh, uh, fasting. And that's what you're doing before you get a colonoscopy. You're in a fasting state. So we are now at one hour. We thank you so much for tuning in. We greatly appreciate you and all that you do to make this show what it is. I want you to listen to me on the Ricky Smiley Morning Show uh, broadcasting uh, this Friday from the Bahamas. It's going to be a live broadcast. We're going to be there answering your healthcare questions. The first broadcast will be at 6.45 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Go to my website, lifeholdrops.com. Get more information about um uh, boosting your immune system health, boosting your general health, and how to lose weight. And also, all my YouTube videos are, are, are on uh, YouTube. Go to Ask ASK Dr. MJ, just as you did for this Facebook Live. I have a whole YouTube channel, lots of great videos that you can get on virtually any topic and find out how to optimize your health. In the meantime, in between time, listen to us. We're going to be ready for Facebook Live next time. Thank you so much, and we appreciate you tuning in tonight.